while they are receiving the medication, we can actually put a cooling cap okay. cooling on cap. the patient's head. And this is cooled to a very low temperature. It reduces the amount of blood going to the scalp. And it actually reduces the hair loss by right. up to 78%. Hi everyone, welcome to Misconception. Today with me, we have Dr. Tomaso again, an oncologist at Clinical Hospital Singapore. Our topic today is chemotherapy causes hair loss. Is it always? If you are new here, my name is Dr. Tony Setiobudi, an orthopedic surgeon at Mount Elizabeth Hospital Singapore. In Misconception, we are trying to clarify misinformation and misconception in medicine that is spreading around. And we ask the experts to clarify. Okay, Thomas, you are an oncologist and obviously you have a lot of experience using different modalities to treat cancer, including chemotherapy. Hair loss is one of the common concerns of people who suffer from cancer. So my question to you today is, does chemotherapy always cause hair loss? Okay, Thomas, time is yours. Okay, to directly answer your question, all right, uh, it does not always result in hair loss. To probably clarify a misconception, okay, chemotherapy is not the only way to treat cancer. In fact, for most early stages of uh, cancer, the main treatment is actually surgery. Oh, For okay. intermediate stage right. of yeah. cancer, it is usually a combination of mm. surgery, maybe with chemotherapy right, and radiotherapy. Um, in advanced stages, meaning to say if the cancer has spread right, to other parts of the body, uh, the usual treatment is chemotherapy traditionally, but okay. more and more now, we have other ways of treatment, such as targeted therapy, immunotherapy, right. and there is also radiotherapy. So right. chemotherapy is not the only way. Yes, okay. and it does not always result in hair loss. Can I just ask you, how does chemotherapy lead to hair loss? Can you okay. explain? So generally, chemotherapy targets actively dividing cells. It has a preference to kill cancer cells because cancer cells are actively dividing, yes? Um, but chemotherapy is not selective. So chemotherapy does kill normal cells as well. And in particular, the so-called normal cells that are at risk are cells that are actively dividing. So you do get changes in your skin very commonly. You do get changes in your nails, you get changes such as ulcers, because all these are actively dividing cells, right? That always have to regenerate. And of course, the hair, right? The hair is growing. Our hair is growing all the time. And therefore, it is also, all right, a target for chemotherapy mm, okay. to actually affect its growth. Right, right, right. I think because we see what we can see, we don't see what is inside, but chemotherapy does have uh, side effect in the gastrointestinal system, but we cannot see that. But we can see hair loss. So people are very concerned about that. You are mentioning that some chemotherapy does not cause hair loss. What makes the difference? I would say just the difference in the way certain chemotherapy works. The different drugs target uh, different parts of the cell cycle. Okay. Yes. Um, the cell divides uh, in a certain way. Different mm. chemotherapies target different parts of the cell cycle differently. But in general, uh, anti-microtubule drugs, uh, they do cause uh, hair loss. Anti-metabolites, uh, which is uh, basically the building blocks of, say, DNA or RNA, uh, which certain chemotherapy interrupts, uh, these uh, generally do not cause hair loss. But again, it is just examples. Yeah. Mm. And is this medication or chemotherapy uh, used for certain type of cancer or is it applicable to all types of cancer? 
Um, I would say that uh, we use different classes of uh, chemotherapy for all different classes of cancer. All right. All right. There are some chemotherapy drugs that work better for certain cancers. Uh, for example, uh, in colorectal cancer, yes, for the early and intermediate stages uh, where we use this medication called 5-FU, uh, and also we use commonly this medication called oxaliplatin, uh, these generally do not cause hair loss. But it does not mean that all chemotherapy for colon cancer uh, do not cause yeah, hair loss. Okay. There are medications that, that also yeah, cause yeah. hair loss that we sometimes use for colon cancer. Okay. Just to give us some idea, how many percent do you think chemotherapy drug cause hair loss and how many percent doesn't cause hair loss? I, I don't think there's a fixed percentage, Tony. Um, but for example, if we are talking about colorectal cancer, then majority of the drugs do not cause hair loss. I, I would say that uh, 80% of the medications do not cause hair loss. Whereas if you look at uh, breast cancer, uh, most of the medications actually cause hair loss. When we use the medication, it's the effectiveness which is the first consideration rather than uh, whether or not it causes hair loss or not. Okay, Thomas, for some chemotherapy that causes hair loss, is there anything that you can do to minimize the amount of hair loss to the patient? Oh, that's a very good question, Tony. So even for medications that we know you, that usually cause hair loss, there are now certain devices that we can use when the patient receives the chemotherapy to reduce mm. the predominant, the, the percentage of hair loss. Yeah. Okay. So when patients get these chemotherapy medications, while they are receiving the medication, we can actually put a cooling cap okay. cooling on cap. the patient's head. All right, and this is cooled to a very low temperature. And what happens is it reduces the amount of blood going to the scalp. And okay. therefore, it also reduces the amount of chemotherapy that goes to the hair cells. Okay. Right? And it actually reduces the hair loss right, by right. up to 78%. Okay. Yeah? Do you put this during chemotherapy session or you need to put it yes. on after that as well? So it's actually put on before, during and a short duration after. Uh, can you give me some idea like how many hours before and how many hours after? So generally about half an hour before, an hour before and half an hour to an hour after. So it does lead to the whole treatment uh, being slightly longer but most patients uh, feel that it's worth it. The drugs are not immediately cleared from the system and therefore uh, cooling caps do not reduce the incidence of hair loss by 100%. Okay. Yes, but it does actually help uh, prevent uh, the maximal concentration exposure which is actually during Okay. The infusion itself. Yeah. Okay. That is very interesting and fascinating. I never heard about this cooling cap. So it's something new for me as well. So back to the original question. Chemotherapy causes hair loss. Is it always? The answer is no. But if the chemotherapy does cause hair loss and the patient needs it, you can put cooling cap to reduce the amount of hair loss. Right, Thomas? Yes, that's right. Thomas. All right. Thank you so much, Thomas, for your time today. I learned something today. I believe uh, the listeners also learned something valuable. Uh, for the listeners, please feel free to type some comments and questions. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I hope to see you again in the next Misconception. Bye-bye.